Francisco Paulino Emenegildo Teodulo Franco Bahamonde, commonly known as Francisco Franco, was born on December 4, 1892, in Spain. Franco was raised in a strict scenario because of his father. He was a serious boy and became really close to his conservative mother. At the age of 14, he entered a military school from which he graduated three years later. Time after, he was promoted to lieutenant and quickly gained reputation because of his effectiveness in commanding troops and his education. He continued in the army for a long time, becoming a national hero. Leading this for him to become the director of the General Military Academy in Zaragoza. However, the Spain monarchy fell in 1931, which took Franco's career to a halt. In 1934, he was restored, and a year later, he became Major General. In the elections of 1936, the leftist popular front won, leading Franco to discomfort. But his position as army's general impelled him to declare a state of emergency against the government. He was removed from his position thanks to his rebel ideas against the government, which led him to later join the rebels. This year, the Spanish Civil War began with the nationalists to which Franco belonged seizing the region. He wished for a government that was based on a military dictatorship, but realized this wouldn't be completely possible because he needed the civilian support. He was a careful and systematic leader of the war and suffered very few defeats thanks to his army's quality and to the help provided by both Germany and Italy. Franco won in 1939, bringing an end to the civil war and marking the beginning of his dictatorship. Francisco Franco came to power in the year of 1939. He established a fascist government seen Germany and Italy as role models. The first that Spain will join into the Axis alliance was making bigger. France and the United Kingdom were becoming weaker. Franco noticed that helping out Hitler would put him directly into the war. At December 1940, the German necessity for the Spain of to join into the Axis alliance decreased, but Hitler still asked Francisco help for passing through the land so they could attack Gibraltar. Franco refused, and it was the end of the negotiations between Germany and Spain. After Germany invaded Russia, a thirst of anti-communism began in Spain. People noticed that if the United Kingdom and Russia became allies, this would mean the expansion of the communism. Spain decided to send a division composed of Spanish volunteers in what caused the Blue Division. A total of 45,000 volunteers fight under the German flag. Even though Spain did help Germany, it was a neutral country because it doesn't contribute to other European countries. Nationalism is a feeling of loyalty and devotion to your country or nation. In extreme cases, people put their nation above all others and focus on promoting their culture and ideas to everyone. Francisco Franco used extreme nationalism to persuade military forces to revolt against a democratic government. As we said before, he was in the military for a long time making him a hero for the people and gaining a lot of power. With the support of the people and the military on his side, with some words, he ignited nationalist ideas on their head. With Germany, Italy, and many people on his side, he won the civil war. When Francisco was in the military, he was taught to protect his country at all costs, making him gain a lot of nationalist ideas about his country. He was a dictator who favored large landowners, business people, and the Catholic Church. So now we're going to talk about the human rights that were violated by Franco. So the first one was the Article 3rd, the most common when it comes to war. Life, security, and freedom. This right was violated by Franco when he sent some bombings to Spanish cities and killed many civilians. Then. He also violated Article 5 and Article 19. This consisted in no torture and freedom of expression. So Franco, what he did in here was he would imprison the Spanish people who were against his ideology and he would also torture them for the information of his rival, of his relatives. So none of Franco's actions were actually punished. So many people, families, from the victims during those times, open up investigations to Franco and their connection and his connections. So there could be a system of justice done to this 
government and authorities. Franco's dictatorship ended with his death on November 20th, 1975. He made sure Juan Carlos, who was part of the royal family, succeeded him in power. But Franco underestimated Juan Carlos and thought he could mold him and made him follow his regime. As soon as Juan Carlos took power, he ended with the dictatorship and established a democracy. Even though Franco has been dead for a while, Spain still has scars. The Basilica in the Valley of Dead, where he is buried, is a reminder of the horror he put Spain through. More than 100 streets in Madrid have, have names of Franco's followers, and that is also a reminder for people. When Luis Zapatero became Prime Minister of Spain, he addressed the historical memory law, which gave rights to, to the families of the victims of Franco and blamed the dictatorship. He addressed this law because his grandfather was a victim of Franco's atrocities. Nowadays, many people like Zapatero do not know what happened to their families during Franco's dictatorship. We can conclude that Franco's dictatorship was a novel time for Spain because it was full of terror, oppression, and violence, and it still has an effect on Spain today. That was all for the news for today. Have a good day.